Cabinet decision number 91 of 2023, it was introduced around 25th of August in the Ministry of Finance, by the Ministry of Finance, via Cabinet decision number 91, which introduces the reverse charge mechanism for the uh, for dealing in electronic goods. And this is going to be effective from 30th October. Now, what this Cabinet decision number 91 of 2023 is all about? In simple, plain language, uh, what you need to understand is a VAT registered dealer or a VAT registered supplier in electronic goods. And in the next slide, I have explained what are specifically the electronic goods. So just hear me out. A VAT registered supplier in electronic goods, supplying electronic goods to a VAT registered buyer. And the intention, the word used in the cabinet decision is the intention. And the intention of the buyer is to either resale these electronic goods or to use them in either production or manufacturing of those electronic goods. Only then this cabinet decision applies. If these conditions are not fulfilled, then the supplier charges VAT normally and the buyer accounts for the purchase and input tax on it. But if the cabinet decision applies, then the supplier will not charge VAT to the buyer of the electronic devices and instead the buyer will consider it as the uh, will account for VAT as per the reverse charge mechanism. So we all are familiar those who are registered and for sure only then you must be attending this seminar because then only it relates to you. So we all know whenever we import something from outside UAE what do you do you account for VAT as per the reverse charge mechanism. So same way in this case as well, even though you are buying locally for this particular transaction where cabinet decision number 91 applies, you will account for VAT. The buyer will account for VAT and how and how it will be disclosed in the VAT return that also I'm going to cover today. So, so far, uh, I believe I have uh, made the understanding clear on this and as to what this cabinet decision comes up with why this cabinet decision has been introduced by the F uh, ministry of finance because this is the part i love about the fta and the uh, you know tax authorities here they see the place where you know they can make the lives easier of our taxpayers and without having any impact on the final revenue from the tax to the tax authorities this is just the ease of doing business for some of the uh, suppliers and uh, traders in electronic devices. So I was just doing some research, just the mobile, uh, the smartphone uh, sales or the trade in smartphones in UAE has been around 0.8 billion US dollars in UAE. So now with the introduction of this cabinet decision, what has happened is the supplier will not charge VAT to the buyer and thereby it will not have a cash flow cash flow impact neither on the supplier side and also not also not on the buyer side because the buyer will be recording the vat himself and if he is eligible for the uh, input tax then he can claim in the same return and there is no impact on his vat liability for the buyer as well so let's understand what are electronic devices. There are four categories. First being defined the mobile phones and smartphones. So any kind of mobile phones, even if it is not a touch screen phone, normal uh, GSM SIM phone is also covered in this. All kinds of smartphones are covered in this. But only one condition that they have put that these phones should be working through wireless transmission. So the only thing that is excluded in this is the landline phones which are, you know, which have their connection through the wire. So landline phones, PABX, those uh, particular phones are not covered under this decision and they are not defined under electronic devices. So if any white registered dealer is trading in those kind of phones, then this decision does not apply to you. Next is the computer devices, all type of computer devices, whether it is your desktops or laptops, laptops for professional use, laptops for personal use, even the, uh, you know, laptops or computer devices used in car uh, automated systems, even those to that extent are covered under this electronic devices definition. 
So no problems there. If you are a uh, dealer in one of those computer devices and you are going to make a supply, so you need to be aware of this cabinet decision and the requirements of this cabinet decision. Next being tablets, all kinds of tablets. Tablets is what? It's a mixture of a smartphone and a computer device. It can, you know, it gives the comfort of both. So in this case, uh, the tablets, all kinds of tablets are covered. The only specific kind that is not covered is the e-tablet, uh, e-readers. Uh, the very common example for e-readers would be your, uh, I think, the Kindle Kindle books, the uh, tablets that are only specific for reading something. They do not have any software or any browsing facilities or any gaming softwares inside it. So those kind of uh, tablets are specifically not covered under this decision. Apart from that, all kinds of tablets are covered. And if you are dealing in it, then you need to follow this cabinet decision. One thing all of us also needs to understand that this decision, the way the language is, it doesn't seem to be optional. So in case you are a trader in electronic devices, wet registered trader and uh, sell, you know, supplying electronic goods to white registered buyer, then if the intention of the buyer is to either resale these goods or use them in production or manufacturing, then this decision applies and it doesn't seem to be optional. So all of us need to take care of that, that it's kind of a mandatory decision and a mandatory uh, provision that everyone has to follow. There are parts and pieces of electronic devices defined under electronic devices and Yet we have, uh, we are, you know, these parts and pieces, what actually will be covered under parts and pieces? It may be hard drives, it may be chips, it may be uh, some accessories to the uh, electronic devices defined above, but exactly what it is, it's yet to be defined via cabinet decision. The recent, uh, you know, FTA guide also on the same decision had come, which was detailed, but however, in that also they mentioned that the parts and pieces of electronic devices will be defined uh, via separate ministerial decision. So we still are waiting for that decision. But what do we do then in that case? Since we are saying the deadline is 30th October and <clears throat> we are very near to that. So what do we do? If the parts and pieces are not defined until then, then what we do? The devices that are already defined and if we are dealing on those, we apply this cabinet decision number 91 only to those. And any hard drives or chips, you may think that it's going to be covered in this uh, definition of electronic devices. We continue the traditional way of charging VAT to our customers. Making charges or, uh, you know, the concept of composite supplies where uh, along with the device or supply of electronic devices, let's say you are also covering for the transportation and for the transportation you are charging separately to your clients. In such case, this decision, you need to understand that you, it applies only to the electronic devices, the supply of electronic devices. But if you have charged your client separately for any other service like repacking or for, let's say, transport, in that case, if you have charged it separately, then it will not be covered under uh, the cabinet decision number 91. And in that case, you will have to charge VAT on that separate service. So while making every supply and making the invoice, you need to understand and you need to also evaluate whether you can differentiate when you are making the supply, whether you can differentiate between, you know, only the electronic goods supply and the other services. If it can't be differentiated and you are making a single invoice where you are you have clubbed the you know cost for providing such small service which can be ancillary to the supply of electronic devices and the rate of electronic devices is already adjusted for such service, then in that case it is okay. But if you are showing it as a separate line item or issuing a separate invoice for such kind of service, then reverse charge mechanism will not apply you will have to charge vat at five percent on that to your customer and this cabinet decision number 91 will not apply in that case please be mindful of this fact because 
the same reverse charge mechanism uh, was introduced back in 2018 for dealers in precious stone and metal wherein uh, the making charges is always a component in uh, jewelry right so what happened that uh, all the dealers in precious stone and metal and jewelry they implemented this decision and when they were uh, supplying the jewelry to their uh, customers white registered customers they in the invoice they put the value of gold separately as per the uh, market value of the gold and in separate line item they uh, charged their clients making charges on that value of gold and they in on both on both the uh, items they did not charge vat then back in 2021 fta did the audit for some of the precious stone and metal and they asked them to revise their vat returns for last 3 4 years and they said that this particular making charges that you are showing it separately it is not part of the uh, you know precious stone or metal and it's a service it's not a supply of the uh, jewelry and they had asked them to revise it so we don't want the same thing to happen to dealers in electronic devices from the start be aware of this fact if you are providing any ancillary services which can be separated from the electronic devices you separate it there is no problem but you do charge vat on it okay conditions when does this uh, cabinet decision apply first condition is both the buyer and the seller must be registered for vat and the intention from the buyer should be for the resell of the goods or this electronic devices should be either used in producing or manufacturing of this electronic devices if the above requirements are met then what happens the supplier will not account for vat the supplier will have to issue a tax invoice but it will not account for any vat and the buyer of the goods instead will account for vat on the supply as per the reverse charge mechanism just as well so conditions for buyer now the buyer must provide with two declarations written declarations to the seller so it's the if the intention of the buyer is to resell these goods or use them in production or manufacturing then these two written declarations needs to be provided to the supplier before the date of supply and before the date of each supply what are the two declarations first a written declaration that mentions the intent of the supply that he is going to use it either for resale or manufacturing or production and second written declaration confirming the details of the fta registration number that the buyer is registered with fta and what is his trn number and the details with what name it is registered these two declarations can be combined into one so you don't need to have separate declarations you can come make a one format one declaration and make sure that you provide this declaration to your supplier before the date of supply conditions for seller similarly if the conditions are similar for the seller but it's their responsibility to get these declarations from the buyer before supplying any goods and also it's the responsibility of the supplier when the declaration is received they go on the fta website and check whether the trn provided by the buyer is genuine and is active or not now i believe most of you are aware of how to check the how to do the trn verification if not i can share my contact details and we can speak and i can let you know it's very simple you just need to go on tax.gov.ae on the right hand side there is trn verification tab wherein you just put the trn verification uh, trn number and uh, you know displays the name of the company to whom this trn belongs so in case you are not meeting the conditions if either buyer or seller is not meeting these conditions what will happen the supplier will have to charge vat so when can this happen when there is an intention of either reselling or producing this goods uh, electronic devices but the declarations were not given by the uh, buyer and the supplier also was following up but it did not get what will happen in those cases the supplier will have to charge vat uh, to the buyer of the electronic devices and the buyer will not be able to take input 
of those uh, electronic purchase of electronic devices. So it can be a bit of problem in case you have not uh, done the simple uh, compliance requirement of giving in the declarations. And also in a second uh, way where you are not meeting the conditions, let's say the declarations were given by the buyer and later on <laughs> the goods were used for personal, for the consumption of the buyer and they were not resold. Then in also that case, the input will be blocked on such purchases for the buyer and electronic goods. How do you disclose it in VAT returns? So for buyer of electronic goods, when they buy, the RCM is applied. So they have to do two things. One, they have to account for VAT liability. And this VAT liability will be disclosed under box number three in the VAT return. And if they have genuinely used these goods to make taxable, further taxable supplies, and then in that case, if they are eligible to take input of such uh, purchases, then they will declare the same amount in box number 10 of the VAT return. For the supplier, the supplier has to in issue the invoice, but it will not have any VAT. And a very important a statement has to be mentioned in the invoice, wherein it says that the recipient of the goods will account for VAT as per the Article 48 that, is, that belongs to the reverse charge mechanism of the Fed, uh, UAE VAT law. So that particular statement has to be mentioned. It is a requirement if you go and check the UAE VAT law as well. The conditions for reverse charge mechanism and the conditions for issuing a tax invoice, they have specifically mentioned this condition where a reverse charge applies between two VAT registered buyer and seller inside country and the reverse charge applies in that case, it, that uh, condition has to be mentioned in the invoice. So. If you are not mentioning that condition in the invoice, you will be failing the uh, requirements of the cabinet decision number 91 of 2023. And accordingly, there can be some consequences to it. So I hope with this, uh, I have uh, brought in more clarity with respect to what this decision is all about, whom does it belong to and what are the conditions required uh, from both buyer and the seller of the electronic goods both should be wet registered and the intention should be either to resale produce or manufacture such electronic devices